Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome to our presentation on natural and permanent weight loss solution. We are going to go ahead and jump right in with the training here. And then for anybody who's watching this replay, definitely make a note of any questions that you have and feel free to email me or reach out to me on social media and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions and help you with this. I know it's a big, big topic. So jumping right in, welcome, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to watch this and to learn a little bit more about natural ways to support your weight loss. You're going to be learning a lot today and I hope that you find it very helpful. So three things for this presentation, definitely your presence. So being able to sit and you know watch this for about an hour and just be really focused. You can learn a lot in the next 60 minutes if you just actually stay focused and present. And then also positivity, it's super common, especially when you're learning new things to get a little bit frustrated or have self doubt or fear. So definitely having you know your positive self love and being able to stay positive throughout the process and your participation. So as we're going through the workshop, like reflecting on yourself and seeing like which points make the most sense to you and which ones sound like ideas that you want to try. So again, thank you for taking the time to watch this. I'm so glad that you are here. Your intention. So before we jump in, I'd like for you to take a couple of seconds and just reflect on your own about what is one thing that you'd like to learn today. So like, what's your main health goal? If you signed up for this, if you're watching this, then it probably has something to do with weight loss, but just take a couple of seconds and think like, what is your main intention for being here? For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kiria and I'm a holistic nutritionist and it's my passion and pleasure to help you achieve optimum health naturally. I definitely have had my own health struggles in the past. It really started in like high school for me and then it peaked during my first year of public school teaching. Um, I have so much respect for all the teachers out there. During my first year of teaching, I really gave it my all and was totally overwhelmed, but definitely was wanting to you know, make the most of my time teaching. And I was really depressed my first year of teaching. I felt like really, really alone and it was super hard. <laughs> and so as a result, my hormones were, went up and down, my blood sugar went up and down. I was really, really struggling. Um, I resorted to like disordered eating. I was just eating like a lot of chocolate and things because I felt so stressed. Like during the work day, I would basically just drink a lot of coffee in the morning. And then afterwards, I would like be tutoring kids during lunch and after school and all the teachers know what I'm talking about. And then I would just get home and I would be so hungry that I would just kind of eat like whatever because I was stressed and, and super hungry. So clearly that resulted in a lot of issues. Like I said, I was super dependent on caffeine to get going. I had like no energy. I gained the most weight that I ever had in my life. I had acne, like my menstrual cycles all over the place. So definitely was struggling. And I realized that something needed to change that I couldn't just keep going like that. Otherwise there's going to be more severe consequences down the road. So I totally started like researching and you know, a lot of DIY work and it turned into a huge passion for health. So I ended up getting my master's in health education and nutrition and changed careers from being a public school teacher to being a nutritionist because I was able to help myself heal naturally and I really want to continue to help others do the same. So I feel much better now. I'm able to do all sorts of things. This um, photo in the top right corner is me in Thailand where I'm living now and the little baby elephant at a sanctuary like came out and toppled me over. It was so cute. Um, and yeah, I, you know, all these different schools and things. But what really makes me the most happy is to help you find natural solutions to your health problems. And that is why you are here. So these are all the kind of like certifications and schools and, you know, I'm also a registered yoga teacher and a certified holistic doula and everything like that. Um, so I'm really just super like a health nerd at heart. I love learning more and more. But what makes me super excited is that everybody that I work with has improved their health like 100%. And that's because when you honor your body naturally, you're really able to help yourself heal. Right, and we're all human, so there's going to be some sort of challenge along the way throughout life, it's just the way it is. But absolutely, if you listen and if you take into practice at least a couple of the things that you learned today, you're going to see results. 
just so you know, as you're watching this, since everybody is different, these tips apply to everyone. So I specialize in helping people with blood sugar issues, brain support, gastrointestinal issues, infection, autoimmune, clearly weight loss. So like wherever you are in your health journey, just know that this applies to you as well. Cool. So as a little refresher, before we jump right in, there's gonna be a lot of information. And I wanted to give you everything that has worked with my clients in the past. So just kind of think of it as like a healthy buffet. And I want you to save your questions until the end. So if you start to feel like overwhelmed or anything, don't worry about all of the information, but just really kind of maybe jot it down. Like if you're on your phone or your computer, a little notepad and see like what feels the best for you. And then we'll for sure have some time to chit chat at the end and share your questions and your comments and everything like that. So again, just like a delicious buffet. You don't have to eat everything or do everything that I'm saying, but your most favorite ideas. Cool, cool. Okay, so the first tip here is all about sustainable weight loss. If you've ever tried to lose weight before, you are probably familiar with like the weight loss roller coaster, right? How things can go up and go down and you can try certain things and then the weight might just come back. So clearly that's frustrating. It's also taxing on the body to go through so many changes because it affects your blood sugar, it affects your hormones, it affects um, your mental health, obviously, right? It can just be super challenging. And I know like when I was trying to lose weight, eventually I just gave up and I was like, it's not really working, so I might as well just eat like the whole box of chocolate anyways. So that was um, not really the best, right? So that's why we're here and we're talking about sustainable weight loss. Um, let's see. Yeah, with that said, the reason why I hesitate is because I just want to point out that it's going to take time, right? So this isn't like a lose 50 pounds in one month kind of approach. This is really like honoring your body naturally. So that way you can have sustainable weight loss. So even though it might take a little bit longer than like slim fast or getting liposuction or something like that, the results will actually last for the long term. Yeah, okay. I hope that makes sense. So shifting the focus here, only 20% of dieters who lose weight on a diet actually end up keeping it off in the long term. So clearly that's not very good and the rate of obesity is just rising and rising. So the whole idea is shifting the focus from like losing weight to having better health overall. And the reason why that's important is because once you honor your body to come into balance naturally, then not only will you start to lose weight, will your hormones come into balance, will you feel happier, will you notice that you're getting stronger, your digestion is better, but it's like the whole lifestyle approach. So if you've been following me for a while, you know I talked about like the wheel of wellness, and that's the idea that recognizing like your weight and the number on the scale or the size of your pants like isn't the most important thing necessarily, but if you shoot one step beyond that and you're aiming for healthy, living and like a truly healthy life all around, you'll get the weight loss, but you'll also get so many other benefits as well. Okay, so back to balance here. This kind of ties in with like trying to lose weight. So I don't really recommend counting calories or like doing some severe diet or things like that, but just bringing everything back into balance. So touching on like the wheel of wellness, we talk about mental health, social health, intellectual health, physical health, obviously, right? Occupational, financial health, and especially with like the stress that's going on in our world today, it's just so important to try and find your own equilibrium. Like what works for you might not necessarily be what works for others, and that's absolutely okay. It's just important to find your own point of balance. So definitely tuning in to like what you need individually. And that's why I'm such a big fan of functional blood chemistry analysis, because we do the blood work to see exactly where your body is out of balance so that you can focus on bringing it back in. But at the main root of this, just think about your lifestyle. So being hyper-focused on trying to lose weight could end up making you super stressed, right? And it can kind of throw your mental health out of balance or even social health if you feel like you can't go out to the party or you can't go out to dinner. But trying to do like one thing, like one thing for your physical health, if it's to dance five minutes a day or to eat a little bit healthier. I'm sure a lot of you have already downloaded my Eat Like a Goddess guide, but that includes the top five tips to 
improve your health overall. And I've had a lot of women lose weight, like even up to 20 pounds within four weeks with that. And that's just because it's focusing on bringing your whole body back to balance. So if you don't already have that guide, it goes into super detail. You can just download it on my website for free at cubriahealth.com. Okay, so why do people regain lost weight? If you are watching this and if you've tried to lose weight for a while, you've probably been there before where you lost weight and then it came right back. So that's like the ping pong effect or like the weight loss roller coaster. And there's a few main reasons. So the first one is blood sugar. So if you're not you know, focusing on your overall health and you're not actually stabilizing your blood sugar, then you're not going to lose weight sustainably. You might lose weight in the short term, but it will come back in the long term. So if you are not already aware, your blood sugar, right? So all the beautiful trillions and trillions of cells that make up you, they all need sugar and fuel to survive. So you need oxygen and fuel. That's what everybody needs. Those are the two top things. So breathing, obviously, right? That's super important. You can take a nice deep breath right now. Okay, and then clearly fuel too. So there's a few people, if you've heard of the ketogenic diet before, then that's like people who are, if they're doing it right, then they're burning fat as fuel, but that's really hard to do and most people aren't actually doing it. So the rest of us are burning sugar as fuel or glucose. That's definitely okay. It doesn't mean you're burning like M&Ms or Snickers bars. It's just the glucose. So your cells literally need the glucose or the energy to come in in order to feel energized and in order to be able to do all the other parts of your body to keep yourself in balance and harmony. So if you are skipping meals, right, which is common with a lot of diets, if you're not eating enough calories, if you're not eating good protein and fat with every meal or every snack, then you are not going to be able to fuel your cells. When you don't fuel your cells, your mitochondria doesn't activate, you're not able to have the best metabolism, you don't have enough energy to even go out and exercise. So it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. You need to be able to eat enough food and good food, like protein and fat, to be able to fuel your body so that you have energy for the long term, right? And if any of this doesn't make sense, we'll definitely have time for questions at the end and we'll chat about it. Um, or if you're watching the replay of this, then definitely reach out to me on social media or shoot me an email so I can help explain it to you a little bit more. So that's the first one is blood sugar. The second one is detox. So if you haven't done like a detox in your life, then that could be a big reason why it's hard to lose weight. A lot of toxins are stored in the adipose tissue or like in the fat cells and especially around the tummy region. So even if you've lived like a perfect life, which for all human, like who's done that, you live in an environment that's polluted, right? So the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, the food has pesticides and added hormones, right? There's just stress. Stress can be a toxin too, negative people in your life. So all of this adds up and your body is so intelligent that it doesn't want the toxins to hurt you. So instead it will store many of those toxins in your fat tissue and it just kind of puts them away for later. Uh, one example is I was working with a client before and she was in her 50s and she used to smoke marijuana like when she was in like her teenage years and in her 20s, but she hadn't smoked for like 30 years and then we did a detox together because she was working on losing weight and she like sent me a message and she was like, I'm feeling high. She was like, I'm feeling like, like I smoked, but I didn't and I haven't for 30 years. And what was happening is that she was actually losing weight and the toxins were coming out and she was experiencing those toxins again because it was getting flushed out of her system. So that's kind of an extreme example, but when you haven't done like a, a really comprehensive detox that actually gets the toxins out, then that could definitely be a barrier for losing weight. And when I'm saying detox, I don't mean like juice fast. I don't mean water fast. I don't mean eat nothing. I mean like really eating an anti-inflammatory diet like you have in the eat like a goddess fat. It could be that simple and drinking lots of water, reducing your stress. Um, the detox 360 that I do and that I offer is like the most comprehensive one. And we use some supplements to like push the cells out so that they can cleanse um, more of the toxins. But even just starting with the eat like a goddess diet is a great way. So blood sugar is one of the reasons and then a need to detox is another. And then the third main one is a hormonal imbalance. And this is we see primarily with your thyroid gland. 
So your thyroid is here like in your neck. And if there's any sort of thyroid imbalance, that can definitely skew the metabolism. So many, many women, most women in my practice, especially over the age of 40, have some sort of thyroid imbalance. So it's just super common. And if you've been trying all the, you know, quote unquote, right things to lose weight and you still can't, that could be a reason, or even just your sex hormones being out of balance. If you have PCOS, endometriosis, you know, ovarian cysts, if you have any sort of like irregular menstrual cycles or you have really bad PMS or really difficult menopause, then that could not be another reason. So hormones, blood sugar, and detox. Okay, protein power. So definitely it's important to eat protein and for sure healthy fats too. This is one of the number one mistakes that I see when people try and lose weight is that they're just eating so few calories, which puts yourself into starvation mode. And when your body's in starvation mode, it slows down the metabolism because your body's super intelligent, right? So then when you finally go back to eating like normally, because you know, who's going to stay on like a starvation diet forever, your body then is like, wow, I'm done, you know, being starved, I guess, like the winter season is over. And then it just stores all of those calories, and it turns into fat in the body. So that's why it's much better to do like a sustainable approach where you're eating, you know, good, healthy food. And it's not just the quantity of calories, it's really the quality. So say you're eating like a 1000 calories, but it's slim fast shakes or something which are like, poison, <laughs> um, or you're eating 2000 calories, but it's all these really healthy proteins and super healthy fats and natural foods, you know, maybe you can buy organic, maybe you can get it from the farmer's market, maybe you can grow your own, then that's so like pure fuel, right? Like we were talking about before. So the number one tip, if you don't take anything else away from this workshop is to eat a protein and a fat every two to three hours. And again, in your Eat Like a Goddess guide, there's a 30-day meal plan, and it has a ton of ideas for healthy snacks and lots of protein-based uh, recipes. Cool. So single ingredient whole foods. When you are trying to think about what to eat, especially if you're trying to lose weight, we've been so trained in our society and like Cosmo Magazine and MTV and you know the news and everything to really restrict our foods because we've been told, or at least I was told that it was all about calories in, calories out. And, you know, I just needed to eat less food and exercise more. And then I would lose weight. Right. But it's really not as simple as that because of those three main things that we talked about for the blood sugar, the detox and the hormones. So with all of those, it's important to eat like whole food. It's important to eat real food. You know, you can buy all of these like weight loss snacks or protein bars or things like that which are actually pretty expensive, or you can just like make your own. And when you're eating whole food, especially, you know, things like you can have like rice with avocado and chicken, right? You can have like giant salads with some sort of fish on it. You can have like all sorts of things. Um, but it's just best if you know what the ingredients are. And if you do choose to, you know, get like a protein bar, or protein powder, or some sort of like weight loss snack, definitely read the ingredients because oftentimes those are filled with fillers, right? A lot of those companies are trying to make money. So they put stuff in there like sugar, high fructose corn syrup, things that will taste good to you and that will literally become addictive so that you keep buying it, but it's cheap for them to make and it's adding more toxins to your body, which is really just perpetuating the, the cycle of it being difficult to lose weight. So as much as you can, just focusing on single ingredient whole foods. And the benefit of this is that you know what you're eating. It's healthy for you. It's easier to digest. And it's oftentimes much cheaper too. Like if you buy rice in bulk or if you buy quinoa in bulk or garbanzo beans in bulk, right? It ends up um, being very, very good for the budget. <laughs> Okay, so stocking up and snacking. One of the best things is to set yourself up for success. One of my science teachers way back in high school said prior preparation prevents poor performance. So if you are able to, you know, take your own lunch to work or like a lot of us are at home right now, if you're able to, you know, have your own healthy snacks at home, then you are prepared, right? Because it's it's good to get hungry. You have these hungry hormones like your leptin and everything that will actually make you hungry because your body needs that fuel, right? Going back to the blood sugar is so, so, so essential. So if you stock up your house with good food, 
you're way more likely to succeed. And we just need to move beyond the starvation mindset of like less calories, more exercise. Exercise is good. And for some people, less calories is important. But number one is the quality of calories. So maybe sometime this week or this weekend, you can take like an hour to clean through your house. That would be a really awesome exercise. And just see like, is this good for me or not good for me? And my grandma taught me when I was little to put like, you know, things on my heart and see like what my heart said. And I know that that might be a little bit out there for some people, but if you actually like, you know, you're looking at that box of cereal and you're like, is this really good for me? Like, is this going to help me with my health goals? Maybe it's weight loss, maybe it's hormonal balance, maybe it's just being happier. Like you can look at it and ask yourself, will this potato chips help me be closer to the woman that I wanna be or is it gonna take me farther away? So turn on some good music, get some cozy clothes on and just clean through your house and what I started to tell myself when I was going through my own health journey is that I am like, what I say? Like I am worth more than a trash can. I think that's what I used to say. I'm worth more than a trash can. So it's like I either throw this away or keep it myself because sometimes I didn't want to like throw something away if I already paid for it. But if it was really gonna hurt me, then like what's the point? Or even better, you know, you can take it to like a food shelter or donate it to somebody else or your local church or things like that. But you kind of get to make the choice between like you or somebody else or a trash can. Um, and that would be like an amazing exercise to go through because when you have only good things in your house to keep you healthy, it allows you just to go into autopilot, right? You get home or right, like you had a hard day or a stressful day and you open up the fridge, you open up the pantry and it's only good things in there. That's you being your own best advocate. That's you loving yourself. That's you taking care of yourself. And another good tip is just to buy healthy things. Like maybe you go to a party or you go out to dinner or somebody brings over an apple pie or something to you. That's kind of like special situations and, you know, live life, right? But when you are shopping for yourself or you are setting yourself up for success or not by having certain things stocked up, then that's oftentimes like the game changer that I've seen with a lot of my clients is taking that responsibility, taking that ownership. So if you're up for it, try that maybe today, well, maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow or this weekend and just like clean through your house and see, see how that feels. Okay, limit excess sugar intake. This goes back to the blood sugar part. So if you are currently adding a lot of sugar to your coffee or you find that you're kind of like addicted to sugar or you feel like you need a lot of sweets, that's definitely a sign of blood sugar imbalance because when you're craving a lot of sugar, it's like your cells really need more energy. So if you're already out of balance, then eventually what this leads to is insulin resistance and then prediabetes and then diabetes because your cells start to close off to the sugar. It starts to close off to the energy. And that's like the extreme case when you need to take insulin, right? And like force the fuel into the cells. Um, so hopefully we don't get to that extreme, but the key is to do like prevention, right? So by limiting sugar and focusing on the healthier sources of fuel, like protein and fat, then you're able to stabilize your blood sugar, which in turn will help you to lose weight because it's going to keep those like leptin hormones, those hunger hormones in balance. And it's going to go to the root of the issue, which is fueling your body, right? So oftentimes my clients who struggle with weight loss, they have lower energy too. And just by eating a protein and a fat every two to three hours by having those healthy snacks, it will balance out the blood sugar. So if you are currently struggling with sugar, then do what I say, like swap and upgrade. So if you're currently eating, you know, like a Reese's peanut butter cup every single day, then go to the store and find like an organic Reese's peanut butter cup or go buy like an organic bar of dark chocolate, right? Something like that. So it's a little bit healthier than like the traditional candy bar. Or if you are currently having two giant spoonfuls of sugar in your coffee, Maybe just go to one spoonful of sugar in your coffee and you can slowly start to reduce. Yeah. So you don't need to totally eliminate overnight, but at least start to take steps towards reducing it. Okay. Water. This one sounds so simple, but it really has so many benefits. Um, 
the traditional rule of thumb is to do about half of your body weight in water a day. So if you weigh 200 pounds, then that would be 100 ounces of water every single day. And this ties in with the point of detox. So water is kind of like giving yourself an internal shower. So you're able to flush out those toxins and it also helps with elimination. So you excrete toxins through your body by mostly pooping, peeing, sweating, and exhaling. So that's why sometimes it feels good to do like meditation or just do some deep breathing exercises. And you know, like if you work out, then definitely you get super sweaty, right? And sometimes it's really smelly sweat. It's excreting toxins or if you ever go to a sauna or like a hot tub, things like that. But the main one is elimination by pooping and water helps you to do that. And also peeing obviously, right? But it really flushes out the body internally. And oftentimes, if you feel super hungry, you might just be dehydrated. So it's important to make sure that you're drinking water throughout the day. And if you have, you know, like a water bottle or something that you can measure, okay, I'm supposed to drink four of these bottles a day, then that can really, really help you. The second part here is it's not just quantity of water, it's also quality of water. So the best one is to have like spring water, right? Things like Crystal Geyser or like Fiji water. Um, but we can't always do spring water, right? Well, maybe you can. Maybe you have a spring in your backyard or you have access to buy that. But you can also improve the quality of water yourself by filtering it at home or just by even adding a little tiny bit of sea salt to your water. Like not regular white table salt, but sea salt because sea salt has a lot of electrolytes and good minerals in it. So definitely sprinkling just a little tiny bit in your water could be a good way to improve your water game. Okay, more fruits and veggies. This one seems kind of obvious, but I just have to put it in here as a nutritionist. If you are currently eating a really high carbohydrate diet, that's going to be throwing off your hormones and also throwing off your blood sugar, right? So if you're focusing on more fruits and more veggies, you can have an unlimited amount of fruits and veggies really every single day. More so vegetables because fruit has sugar in it, right? And fruit's still great, but if you are focusing on weight loss, then um, maybe focusing on more vegetables and still fruit, but maybe just more vegetables than the fruit that you're eating. And these are so full of water. They're so full of vitamins and minerals. You know, if you can buy it locally or if you can buy it organic, or maybe you have an apple tree in the backyard, like just enjoy. And it can be hard to make recipes out of fruits and vegetables if you haven't already been used to that. But again, on my website, in your Eat Like a Goddess guide, there's so many recipes there. And I try always to have the recipes be something easy that you can make in under 30 minutes. So it's definitely, definitely helpful because one of the reasons for like it being difficult to lose weight, like I said before with your thyroid or your hormones, is you're just not giving your body the nutrients that it needs. And again, this is another issue with like the starvation diet approach, or if you're just not eating enough calories, your body wants to take care of you, right? Your body wants to survive. Your body is intelligent. So you need to fuel it with really good food and you get so much bang for buck with fruits and vegetables. And if you are mindful of calories, there's very, very little calories in fruits and vegetables when you compare it to things like carbs or beans or bread or um, you know, dairy or cheese, like you get so much more bang for a buck. So definitely a good plug for our fruits and the veggies here. Sleep. I think you'll all love this one. It's really, really, really important to sleep. So research says about seven hours is ideal, but really seven to eight. If you're sleeping less than that, and this also includes your quality, right? Maybe you're in bed for 10 hours, but you're tossing and turning, or you get up in the middle of the night and you check your email or social media, or you just don't have like deep sleep. It's a challenge if you are sleeping less than seven to eight hours of quality sleep, or really if you're sleeping more than that. Um, you know, it kind of leads to issues like depression or clearly weight gain or hormonal imbalance, things like that. But your body is able to rejuvenate while you're sleeping. So you have your sympathetic nervous system, which is kind of like your fight or flight state, right? Like when you're feeling stressed, when your heart is racing, when your pupils are dilated, um, you know, you might get a little bit of sweaty palms, things like that. And then you have your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest state. So for most people, 
they're in their sympathetic nervous system throughout the day. It's just a little bit of stressful, right? Being alive and working and dealing with all the challenges in our life and in the world. But then at nighttime, your body gets to rest and digest, hopefully, unless you're not getting good quality of sleep or you're still feeling so stressed that your cortisol and your stress hormones are through the roof, even while you're sleeping. So when you are able to get that good quality of sleep, and I'll talk about some tips to help you improve your sleep, then your brain is able to recuperate, your gut is able to digest, your hormones are able to focus on trying to come back into balance. Like it's kind of like the cleanup crew, right? Everything gets a little bit repaired at nighttime if you're really able to get to that state. So it's super duper essential. I know sometimes you might want to like watch another Netflix show or do more work or just feel stressed during the night or things like that. But if you can prioritize your own sleep and your own self care, you're gonna get so much more out of it. Um, it's really like investing in yourself. Now ways to improve your sleep are to sleep in total darkness. So if you can have like a blackout curtain or if you have like a, an eye mask that you can sleep with. It's not just for divas, it's actually good because it blocks out all of the light. And the reason why that's important is because your pineal gland, which is kind of like center of your brain, if you're like tapping your forehead, you can uh, help to stimulate it, that produces melatonin. And when it's dark, your body registers that it's nighttime and it should be going to sleep. But if you have the television on, if you have you know your cell phone on, if you have street lights, on you know, the road outside of your window, those are on, and that's telling your body that it's daytime and that it should be producing more cortisol and less melatonin. So definitely trying to sleep in total darkness or stopping television or screens or your phone like an hour before you go to bed, all of that will help you to produce more melatonin, which is like your natural sleep hormone. Stress and food. I know I can definitely relate to this one, and maybe you can too. When you're feeling stressed, like in that sympathetic nervous state, at least for myself and for many people that I work with, we can either A, like crave more food and maybe food that's not really good for us, or B, just stop eating altogether. And it really depends on you, but that's a stress reaction. And this goes into mental health and emotional eating. And it's just important to recognize that this exists. So to take a moment to reflect and see which one are you. When you get stressed, do you, you know, A, tend to binge eat or want like hamburgers and french fries or ice cream or things like that? Or do you B, tend to not eat at all and just like stop all consumption of food? Or maybe you're C, maybe you don't really react to stress through food. But whichever one it is, like taking that moment to recognize when you do feel stressed. And again, this goes back to setting yourself up for success and having healthy snacks and healthy things in the house or a healthy snack in your bag or in your car, in your office, because then if you are super stressed, then you have to go the extra step of going out and getting that food that might not be good for you, right? But if you make it one step more of a challenge to you know, get something that might be potentially damaging to you or take you farther away from your health goal, you're way less likely to do it versus you, know, you open up your, your fridge at home and you have dark chocolate in there, great. Like eat the bar, eat the whole bar if you're stressed. Like it's okay life happens sometimes, but setting yourself up for success so that you don't do so much damage and you don't make it harder. Because oftentimes if you are either, you know, reducing your food consumption, then you can feel bad later because you'll have low blood sugar. Or if you're eating really, you know, ice cream, a lot of people love because it increases serotonin levels, um, which makes you happy. So it's like your brain is smart with the food that it craves because it might give you that spike initially, but then it's going to crash. So we go back to the protein and the fat, right? And you'll learn like healthy ways of eating things, or maybe you'll start to have like, you know, your dark chocolate bar with almond butter if you're stressed or the next step beyond all that with the swap and upgrade is to remove food as a coping mechanism and go to something like meditation or exercise or listening to relaxing music or taking a bubble bath, doing other things to help yourself with stress. Intermittent fasting. So many people ask me about this one, so I just wanted to put it in here. And this definitely works for some people, 
it doesn't work for everyone. So intermittent fasting, if you aren't too familiar with it, is the idea that you're fasting, like you're not eating food intermittently. <laughs> so if you feel like this is something you want to try, since it's super popular these days, you can. But I just warn you that it doesn't work for everyone because going back to the blood sugar. So if you are more of like a Tony Soprano type bodybuild, if you do have a lot of weight to lose, then it could be worth trying. Like if you maybe have more than 50 pounds that you want to lose, then you could try it. I mean, people of all shapes and sizes do it and it works for some, it doesn't for others because of the blood sugar. But the important thing if you are going to try this is that you really focus like this picture on good protein and good fat, like eggs, nuts and seeds, vegetables, avocado, things like that that are going to fuel your body and that are dense. Because when most people do intermittent fasting, they'll do something like eat for eight hours and then fast for the other 16. So maybe they'll eat, you know, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And then the rest of the time they're fasting. And, you know, there's a lot of research that says that it has a ton of good health benefits, um, but it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. And you'll know if it works for you, how you're feeling with your energy mainly and your mental health if you know you try it for a couple of weeks so you pick kind of like what hours work best for you if you want to eat from 8 a.m to 4 p.m things like that and then you really need to eat good food since you're reducing the the quantity of food that you're eating it's got to be dense it's got to be filled with good protein good fat and eating that throughout the day and it is common that people notice that they lose weight but if you're not doing it right and you're just losing weight because you're not eating enough food or good quality food, then whenever you stop intermittent fasting, you'll probably notice that it comes back. But if you are eating like really dense, healthy meals, then it might actually help to stabilize the blood sugar and help to stabilize hormones. So this is one option of more of like a diet that again, works for some doesn't for others. But if you do want to try it, just make sure you, you really focus on the quality of your food and good fat and good protein. Okay, exercise. This is another one that clearly you probably think of when you think of weight loss. It is really, really important. I didn't put it at the beginning of this presentation for a reason because you probably already tried this before, but it is important. And even if you just do five minutes a day, like I often recommend find like your favorite music and just turn on one song if you're not currently exercising at all. Just start with one really awesome song and exercise and dance or just you know play with a hula hoop or go for a walk. But you can start with just five minutes and then maybe slowly increase it as that feels good to you. The trick with exercise is if you already don't have stable blood sugar or stable hormones, then you might not have any energy to exercise. And especially if there is some sort of bigger underlying problem, like a need to detox or a thyroid imbalance, then sometimes it's not the best to really go and do like a boot camp exercise class or something like that if you really genuinely don't have the energy. So that's why I focus on the foundation first of good stable blood sugar, good healthy food, and then you will likely notice that you start to have more energy, right? You're drinking more water, you're eating whole foods, and then once you get more energy, it's important to use it. And I mean, exercise clearly affects your hormones. It gives you those good feeling endorphins so that you can like go on throughout your day and you're feeling happier. And then of course, burns calories, and that is an important part, um, but it's not the most important part. So this isn't a get out of jail free card of like no exercise ever again, but just know that it's important in balance with everything else. You cannot exercise your way out of a bad diet. You cannot eat zero food and exercise and lose weight sustainably for the long term. You can't eat a little bit of food and exercise a lot sustainably for the long term. So really good quality food and exercise as much as feels good with your energy. And you will notice that as you exercise more, as you're eating healthier, all of these things that we've talked about today, then your threshold for the desire to exercise and for your ability and energy 
it will increase. And know that you can do whatever makes you happy. You can hike, you can walk the dog, you can do a Zumba dance class, you can go to the gym, you can do an at-home yoga workout on YouTube. There's so many options. It's really just about moving your body, right? So that's the, that's the spiel on exercise. Accepting fluctuation and sit slip-ups. I was going to say sit-ups. <laughs> Doing your sit-ups. So things will change, right? So it's normal, even when you're doing it naturally, that you might hit a wall. And I know that when I'm working with clients and they're working on losing weight, oftentimes they'll lose a lot in the beginning, like over the first couple of months as we're doing it naturally with all of these tips. And it is common to like hit a wall. And maybe you've experienced this before in the past too. And it's super common, like I'm really stressed out. I'm going to eat a whole pint of ice cream and a whole bottle of wine tonight. Like it just happens sometimes because we're human. But the important thing is to be honest with yourself. You know, if you're working with me, to be honest with me, like whoever is your support group, just to be honest and to reflect and see how it makes you feel mentally, physically, emotionally. Like, okay, I just had a whole giant pint of ice cream and a whole bottle of wine. How do I feel the next day? Like I kind of have a stomach ache, kind of feel hung over. I notice I'm more bloated. Maybe I got a pimple, like whatever it is, just start to notice like, oh, that's how it made me feel. And I don't really want to feel like that again. So maybe, you know, maybe I'll get some coconut ice cream and put some coconut ice cream in the freezer. Maybe instead of wine, I'll have a cup of tea, right? So it's like planning ahead and doing the swap and upgrade so that you have healthier ideas for yourself because there's going to be challenges in life, but you just need to know like what your healthier options are. And just accept it. Like there's going to be challenges, but like I talk to my clients a lot, it's really an upward spiral. You are definitely improving and you're getting closer and closer to your goal, but there's going to be moments of feeling like you're down and that's totally normal, but just keep on focusing on the end goal so you can keep on getting closer and closer. Inspiration and motivation. This changes for everyone. For some people, having a mantra is really powerful. You know, like um, I work with a number of moms who want to lose weight. So it's like healthy mom, healthy family, right? Like the more you take care of yourself, the stronger your family will be. Or it could be like really good music that just makes you feel nice. It could be a really powerful meditation that you listen to. It could be a picture on your phone or on your desktop screensaver. It could be you know, a nutritionist or a coach like me, it could be whatever works for you, but find something to keep you inspired and motivated so that you can really focus on that end goal, right? Like if it is weight loss and like how many pounds do you want to lose? Or really more importantly, like why do you want to lose weight? Is it so you can get pregnant one day? Is it so you can enjoy retirement? Is it so you can feel confident on the beach in summertime? Is it so whatever it is? But just take some time, you know, maybe after this workshop or sometime later this week to sit and meditate. Like, why is it so important to you? It's not because of a, a number on the pant. It's like not because of a number on the scale. Like it's deeper than that. So search a little bit deeper and see like, why does it matter? Is it because you know that you deserve to love yourself and by eating healthier and taking care of your body, you'll be taking care of yourself and you are totally worth that. Like, what is it? So finding that, and that can be your super deep inspiration and motivation. I call it finding your why. So it's like your why power. Why does it matter? Okay. Woo, that was a lot of information we're going to go through super fast. If you are taking notes, then jot down maybe one or two ideas that you love the most, because I want you to put something into action. And remember, it's like a buffet. You don't have to do everything, but definitely one or two things. So we talked about sustainable weight loss and why that's important. We talked about shifting the focus from just like the number on the scale to whole life health, bringing your whole body back to balance, your whole life back to balance, why people regain the lost weight, the power of protein, single ingredient whole foods and why it's so important to eat like that, stocking up and snacking, setting yourself up for success. By the way, that's gluten-free bread for everybody who wants to know. <laughs> Eating gluten-free is a good way to support your weight loss. Limiting excess sugar intake. Drinking water. More fruits and more vegetables, of course. 
good quality sleep, ideally seven to eight hours of solid quality sleep. Stress and food, identifying your relationship to stress and food and making a little step to swap and upgrade to make that better. Intermittent fasting, if it's something that you want to try. Exercise. Accepting the fluctuation and slip ups. Inspiration and motivation. Okay, so take a moment, reflect to yourself. What's one thing that you're gonna try? one thing that you learned today, go ahead and you know write it down, think to yourself like what what is one thing, one thing out of everything that you're going to try. There's a lot that we talked about, but just pick one. And definitely make sure you make it happen. So you have two options. You can totally do this by yourself and try some of the tips that I shared with you. And the second option is to do it with me. So I would love to share this with you. I want you to sign up for a free health consultation with me where I can help you to unpack what's going on in your life and how you can help yourself to improve even more. So this is totally free. If you go to curiahealth.com chat, I wanna help you achieve your goals of weight loss. And there's a lot of tips here, but on this call, I'll help you to identify your why power and help you to see like what specifically is holding you back. You know, is it detox? Is it blood sugar? Is it something else, right? Like maybe it is a need to balance your hormones, but we can figure that out together. And then I can help you with some ideas so that you can balance it on your own. So definitely I would love for you to tune in and to try this. That's everything that I have for now, but please do go to kiriahealth.com slash chat. Don't stop here. You watch this workshop, you learn so much. We are done, but you're just getting started. So you've gotta try at least one thing on your own. Try it out and see what works for you. So thank you so much for watching. Check out kiriahealth.com and I hope to talk with you soon. Alrighty, bye-bye. For everybody who is here live, I'm going to unmute you now, and we are gonna do a little Q&A about anything that we learned today. And I want to see, I love seeing your beautiful faces, by the way, um, but let me know what questions you have. I wanna know, actually, how about two things? Well, we can go around and tell me one thing that you learned, hold yourself accountable, so what's one thing you're gonna try, and let me know if you have any questions. So let's see, Zanth, you're here. Hi, Zan. Can you go first? Zan Thang? Maybe I said your name wrong. What's up? I can hear you. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What did you learn? What's one thing you learned? Oh, yeah. Um, about the hormone things, I think that's definitely something that's really true. Uh, when it comes to me, I kind of been able, like noticing a lot more, especially since having my second child. And so I've been kind of digging in a little deeper to that. And so, yeah, um, yeah. and then on top of that, I would say uh, definitely keeping, like, um, healthy snacks around, and that will kind of give me, like, better results. Because, yeah, if I have, like, chocolate or something in front of me, like, I'm definitely going to eat it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So that's super common, like, especially through pregnancy and after pregnancy, like your hormones change clearly, right? And even just as aging. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, if you, we haven't actually talked yet. So go to curiahealth.com slash chat. And I'd love to dive a little bit deeper into your hormones because there's a lot that you can do to help balance that naturally. Um, okay. I have a number of appointments open today and also next week um, for free appointments. Um, but absolutely, like that's one good tip just to try is have healthier snacks. Like you said, the chocolate, um, but maybe just like darker chocolate. The darker the chocolate, the lower the sugar content. And chocolate actually, cacao has a lot of good nutrients in there. Um, but yeah, so definitely sign up for a call with me and we'll dive into your hormones more and see like how that helps. So you probably vibe with what I was saying, like healthy mom, healthy family um, and having healthier yeah. snacks. Yeah. Does that yes, sound like definitely. a good a good plan for now? Yes, definitely. Yep. And is it Zanthay or Zanthay? Zanthay. Yep, Zanthay. Zanthay. Awesome. I'm so glad that you were here. I saw you you jumped on. So uh, let's talk sometime this week or next week. 
Okay, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, no, not right now, I think, but I was really interested in asking you if there are any natural ways about the hormone balance. And so yeah, I'm interested to chat with you about that later. So Yeah, that's like my specialty because that's what happened to me. My hormones were all over the place. So yeah. it's awful. We'll, we'll bring it back. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yep. Let's see. Um Paulina. Paulina. We all have cool names here. You are unmuted if you want to share. What's one thing that you learned and what's like some questions that you have? Um, well, I know I need to eat more fruits and vegetables and I need to limit myself from how much carbs I eat. Yeah. And I'm a big cheese lover too. <laughs> so like sometimes I have issues in the bathroom and I, and I notice I don't eat enough fiber. I don't have a lot of fiber in my diet. So just changes in my diet. Yeah. Um, I do walk a lot. Um, I just need to exercise more. And I think now since, you know, we all have to stay in our homes, I'll probably just have more time to, you know, do some exercise or like mindfulness, like meditation and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, why do you like cheese? Does it make you feel good or does it just taste good? It just tastes good. Like I've always loved cheese ever since I was little. <laughs> I totally get it. Um, cheese and gluten, they actually, cheese has caseomorphins and gluten has gluteomorphins. So it literally lights up the morphine receptors in the brain. So it like tastes so good and it makes us feel so good. Um, but they are more inflammatory foods. So especially with weight loss, if you can just cut out the glass, like I talked about in the Eat Like a Goddess Guide, which I think you downloaded. Um, mm -hmm, I did. The, okay, awesome. The gluten, lactose, like dairy, our beloved cheese, alcohol, sugar, and soy. I'm telling you ladies, so many people have lost weight just from doing that. And it's because it reduces the inflammation in the body, like the toxins that you're bringing in. So it, mm -hmm. it helps everything else to come into balance. So it could be a fun experiment just to try for like a week and see, um, or at least if you love cheese, like try reducing or eliminating the other four and you can keep okay. your cheese. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> some, yeah, so some people like to jump in the deep end. Some people like to take baby steps. So just do what works for you, but start with something. So you're already walking, which is really good. And you know that you need to eat more fiber. Are you talking about constipation or diarrhea? Like or like constipa constipation. Yeah. So water, like we talked about, like half your body weight in ounces of water, fruits and vegetables, clearly the anti-inflammatory diet, all of those things can help with constipation. Um, and if that doesn't help, then it might be something deeper. Like it might be a thyroid imbalance and thyroid helps with metabolism. Um, but that's something that we can talk about. And so go to tbrahealth.com slash chat and we can okay. like dig a little bit deeper and see what's causing um, the constipation and like the weight gain or making it hard to lose weight. Are there any other challenges or those are the main two? Um, I think those are the main two. Yeah. So what's the one thing that you're going to try that you learned from the workshop? Um, I'm going to try to exercise. <laughs> I, I'm always drinking water. Okay, so. good. Awesome. Yeah, it's kind of nice to like in the workshop, like I'm sure all of you were like, I did that, I did that, I already do that, I got that one in the bag. And then it's like, ooh, that one I could probably do a little bit more. So yeah, that's a good plan. Exercise a little bit. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would love to chat with you more too uh, with the, the weight loss and the constipation. So curiahealth.com slash chat. There's a few left for this week. And then um, I just opened some more for next week too. So whichever one works for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Alrighty, we got. Um, what's up, Jennifer? What did you learn? What are you gonna try? Oh, let's see. I think you're muted. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. You're muted again. Can't maybe unmute yourself. Uh, maybe. Oh. Hi. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so like 
I mean, because I've been working with you, like the water consumption, the exercise, the meditation, I've been increasing my fruits and veg, my sleep quality is good. I just need to get in and do my functional blood chemistry because I think a lot of it is going to be detox and hormones for me, I think is like a big piece of what I have going down at this point in time. Um, and hopefully that will be happening tomorrow if they are still open, but I have to check. Hmm. Um, and then I think the other thing for me was um, the swap and upgrade idea. I love dark chocolate. Like I, I switched out to like the 72%. But I mm -hmm. like the idea of adding the almond butter too, because I would just like, I'd break off the square and I'd enjoy my square. And I'm like, mm, I don't know, I probably should have added something better to that. I love the almond butter thing. Um, yeah. So doing that, I think is really good. And I mean, you, we've been working, you know, for a bit and I mean, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at what I got happening. And I love cheese as well, Polina. So I totally understand where you're coming from, but I have cut way back on that as well. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm I'm shocked about the ice cream and the serotonin thing. So now I'm 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 going to switch out to coconut ice cream or almond milk ice cream or something like that. Is it dairy milk? Is that what it is? In the ice yeah. cream? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, as yeah. long as you tell me I, I it's I can have ice cream as long as it's coconut or almond, I'll be good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're for sure a superstar and you've like been improving in so many ways and I just love working with you. So I think, yeah, next level is the functional blood chemistry because you've already been seeing improvements with everything that you said you're doing. Yeah. But it, you get to the next level and see like what's out of balance. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the ice cream, it has like tryptophan in it um, and it helps to stimulate your serotonin. So it makes you happier. So that's why a lot of people crave it at nighttime because it will make you sleepy and happy. Um, I, so will say, I will say this though, with my ice cream though, because I did have some this week, but I put more fruit in it than anything. I had like strawberries. I just put one scoop of ice cream in the middle of it. And I just was like, you know, taking off little pieces of ice cream, and like eating berries with it. So I was trying to be, but now that I know that I'm, I'm switching to the coconut and almond milk. Like, oh, that's good. Yep. Good idea. Absolutely. Swap and upgrade. Yep. Swap and upgrade. Enjoy. Coconut Bliss is my all-time favorite. Yep. Um, if you can find Coconut Bliss ice cream, it's like so creamy and it's so good. They have all the fun flavors too, so. Okay. I mean, still, it's not like eat a pint of that, right? right. It's not like, like right. a vitamin, but yeah, if you're having fun, like we'll often bring that to potlucks or parties and we've transferred over for like Christmas dinners. Now our family does the Coconut Bliss, so it's, cool. it's fun. Yeah. Any questions? Um, no, not, not really. I mean, I, this was all great, awesome things. Like, I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'll, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll talk more after my functional blood chemistry. <laughs> okay. We'll talk more after that. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right. Let's see. Teresia, what's happening? Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, I just really love all the information that you're sharing with us. And you're right. Like a few of the things I'm like, oh, I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Oops, I could do better. So definitely the, um, you know, being mindful of how my body feels when I know I'm not eating the right things, as opposed to like doing that cup of tea at night and eating healthy and definitely need to um, continue to do the fat with the protein every few hours. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, um, I hit the, well, not all the time I hit the ground running, but, um, most days I do. And then I don't eat in the morning and I, I know it's important to fuel my body and to do that fat and protein together. So i um, definitely, definitely want to do that to keep that. Um, like you talked before about the fire is fuel and you want it to burn continuously, not just mm -hmm. really hot and die off, but continuously burn for the body and like you said, you know, our body is, is, deserves more than to be treated like a trash can to, you know, be taken care of and as a priority. So with that being said, I, I need to focus more on that. Um, definitely. So just jotting down my little notes over here and, you know, <laughs> just have to do the follow through and, and yeah. So thank you so very much. I was really looking forward to this call. Thank you. Pleasure to have you here. Any questions specifically or you're good with all of your notes? Um, I do. I do have one question that I, I was thinking of. Um, is there like a preferred time that you should stop eating in, in order to like digest good and to be able to sleep well? And yeah, is that's there, a great uh, question. Okay. 
Yeah, um, it depends on the individual. So you ideally, you know, want to have like your dinner, like your big meal, you know, maybe like two hours before you go to bed, um, maybe an hour before you go to bed. But with a lot of people, a lot of people have low blood sugar. It's helpful to have a little snack like right before you go to sleep. And this is contrary to what a lot of people think, but to, for people who have lower blood sugar, or if you wake up in the morning super groggy, like a spoonful of almond butter, you know, a little handful of trail mix. Um, I usually recommend like some nuts because that's a little bit easier to digest than like meat, but some protein fat, like right before you go to sleep, like one spoonful of nut butter, um, you could have like a hard boiled egg, you could have a, a piece of chicken, but like something right before you go to sleep can actually help people to sleep a lot better if you're currently not sleeping so well through the night or you wake up in the morning with very low energy or you're kind of dizzy. Those are signs mm -hmm. of low blood sugar. So kind of depends on you. If you're doing the intermittent fasting thing, then you obviously won't eat before you go to bed, but you can experiment and see what feels best. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's great. Great information. You're welcome. Alrighty. Much love to all of you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day and definitely go to curiahealth.com slash chat and I'd be happy to help you out a little bit more. Okie doke. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.